Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council, and we've got something coming up very soon around the corner that you do not want to miss. We are having our second annual Spring into Summer Arts Fest, and it's going to be on June the 6th at the Blue Ridge Art Space in our parking lot. Uh, you can park across the street. Our dear friend across the road from us has said we can send our cars over there because we want to devote the, the space where we are, our parking lot, to lots and lots of cool arts activities, lots of booths, lots of excitement. And I have with me Dottie Baker. Dottie is a, uh, well, you're a representative of the Potters of the Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. And this is an organization. Tell us about this organization. Potters of the Blue Ridge started about a year ago. Um, and over that year has congealed into mm -hmm. a great working group. And our inaugural show is going to be at ArtsFest. Yeah. So you're partnering with us to offer this exhibit. Right. And they've been a terrific partner. They've helped us with posters and passing the word out and so forth and soliciting a lot of booths uh, mm -hmm. to come in. So mm -hmm. we've got quite a few potters that will have booths. I think the organization itself has some space that you're doing as well. Yes. And then uh, the uh, um, Blue Ridge Fiber Guild, that's the name. I want to make sure I got that right. Uh, they also will have a booth. There's some fiber artists as well. Uh, they're not taking as big of a role, but you know they are ha kind of setting up an area. Mm -hmm. There'll be an area for children's activities where your kids can do some art of some sort or other uh, and enjoy that. There'll also be different types of artists. I know we've got jewelry artists and just a big variety of things going on during that time, perhaps some storytelling. And from our front porch, we're going to have music going all day long. So this is Saturday, June the 6th. It actually starts at 10 and goes till 4. The music starts at 11 and goes till 4 and we'll also have a silent auction. Uh, each of the artists that have a booth is giving a piece to the silent auction to benefit the Arts Council and you'll have a chance to get one of their works of art uh, in a different way from just going to their booth and purchasing it. So you'll have both options out there for you. So it's going to be a fun day. I'm really excited about it. You as an artist, you've been, how long have you been doing uh, clay work, pottery? 46 years. Wow, that's a long time. It's been a great life. And so you've had dirty fingers, fingernails for a long time. And, and short, <laughs> short fingernails. <laughs> Your pianists and potters, they always have right. short fingernails. <laughs> Right. Okay, now this is examples of your work uh, that you're currently doing. I'm sure it's evolved mm -hmm. over the years. You know, you once taught pottery too, so I know you've yes. seen how that process worked where people sort of settle into a style that they like. And mm -hmm. you and I were talking mm -hmm. earlier about you. if you get used to looking at pottery, you sort of know which artist you're looking at by the pieces, you know, mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. have a certain style. Tell us about your style. Why, how would you just categorize your style? I try in my work to allow the clay to do some of what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not a person who wants to control everything about the clay. Clay is a beautiful medium and I like allowing it to do mm -hmm. what it will do. So the techniques that I use are I use because the clay will turn out to be not perfect. I don't want Perfection. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I like imperfection in my work. There's beauty well, in imperfection. Absolutely. Uh -huh. You know, it's interesting that you say that. I work, you know, I interview a lot of artists. I talk to a lot of artists all the time in all different mediums, you know, writers, painters, all sorts of people. And they all say the same thing you just said, is your the medium has its own thing it wants to be. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, the role of the artist is not to control it, but to help it. You know. There's a famous story in the clay world. Um, uh, a living national treasure in Japan said that the only people who could make great tea bowls are people who are either rank beginners or masters. And that's because rank beginners don't yet have all the control they want. Uh -huh. And masters know when to apply control and when to not have control. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I hear uh, uh, we have a guy that, at the art space that makes sculpture out of rocks. And he'll tell me this rock needs to be, you know, I see this rock and it needs to be this, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not that he says, I'm going to find a rock shape just like this so I can put it on this sculpture to be this thing, you know. Right, right. And so you're kind of doing the same thing. You're saying this needs to be, do you do that with like, like the pitcher, for example? I mean, pitcher versus bowl versus cup? 
Uh, typically, I start out with an historic precedent. Uh -huh. The historic precedent for the pitcher is a combination of things. It's partly medieval English uh, jug, mm -hmm. partly Italian uh, medieval, I like medieval, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, partly uh, Italian uh, medieval spout and um, very gestural, not precise uh, brushwork, which is Japanese uh, uh -huh. medieval things. Uh -huh. So I, I start out with a form idea and always I try not to control that too much to allow the clay to have its say. So do you ever do, I've, I know several artists do like a dinnerware set or something like that where everything more or less looks like it goes together. Do you do that? When I first started in clay 46 years ago, I said, I'm going to make a dinnerware set and I haven't made a whole one yet. <laughs> <laughs> you just I'm, hadn't found those blobs of clay that wanted to be I've together. I've made all the parts, but I've <laughs> never put it together. <laughs> That's interesting. And I wonder if we had two or three potters sitting here, they would all have a different perspective, I'm sure, Absolutely. on that. Absolutely, sure. And so it's, it's unique to you as an individual, you know, how you do your uh, approach your work and do that. But I do right. think as a whole, artists are very open to the medium, you know. and It's best to be that mm -hmm. way. Otherwise, you're going to be sadly disappointed. <laughs> now, is it form? Is it um, glazes? What is it that's the most exciting part of the, of the clay process for you? For me, actually working in the wet clay and doing the forming of the object is uh -huh. the part I love best. Um, I make my own glazes and some of the glazes here I've actually formulated myself. Right. Um, so that part is important, mm -hmm. but the part I love is Getting your fingers Getting in. Getting your fingers in there. Because I've noticed that among your pots that you have, or things that you have out here in front of us, they're not all pots, um, that you have a similarity of style in terms of your glazing. You have obviously similar colors. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing I really was struck by was the berry effect and the vine effect that you've got going on some of these pieces. You know, I've not seen that before. That's a nice uh, look. Is that a signature for you? It's a it's a phase that I went through for the last five <laughs> years. I'm sort of heading out of that now. Um, I like that color combination. Uh -huh. I, I've always loved the red green color I combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I live in Southern Ash County, so yeah. vines and berries are all right. around. And I like the fact that your berries sort of protrude just a little bit. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's is that the clay or the glaze? That's that, the, the glaze. Okay. Yeah. Now, on this uh, big picture here, now you've got these, uh, I think Jonathan Roten said it looked like a gourd to him because it has those protrusions mm -hmm. up and down, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, are those a clay or a glaze situation? Both. Uh, I've made that piece and then I put the white slip on it. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I made the piece, I applied the little protrusions, okay. uh, and then I put slip over it. And okay. those I lifted from a medieval uh, English pitcher. Neat, neat. And then you've like got the several effect. textures going on that same piece because mm -hmm. I noticed yeah. the bottom has the stripes and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you like to play with textures? And with I do very much. Um, I, I work in oxidation now and oxidation can be very uh, uniform and uh -huh. boring uh -huh. and I want, I want depth in there. Right. <laughs> so I use translucent glazes and I put textures underneath translucent glazes. And that brings me to something that uh, for years I have talked about the fact that the arts encompass all kinds of other disciplines that people don't necessarily think about. And glazing, for example, is a lot to do with chemistry and oh, math. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yep. And so were you a chemistry and math fan when you were growing mm, up? No. <laughs> my dad was a professional photographer. My mother was an educator. There was no math or chemistry in my upbringing at all. <laughs> yeah. So how, did, how hard was it to get into that with the glazing and, and learning that process? If you're motivated, nothing is hard to learn. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, unless I wanted to do pottery that had no glaze surface at all, right. which wouldn't be very useful, mm -hmm. uh, then I needed to learn about glazes, so I learned. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you don't just buy a glaze and apply it. You start playing with the formulas and the... There are glazes mm -hmm. that you can buy. I don't uh -huh. do that. Mm -hmm. I make my own glazes. Right. Yeah. And so that that's where I'm going with the learning process because you had to learn about what makes a glaze do this or mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the glaze composition, but it also has to do with how you fire it, Absolutely. how long you fire it, how hot you fire right. it. Right. You know. All of that. Uh, yeah. So. But I took a semester course in undergraduate school and then studied more after uh -huh. uh, uh, 
after I graduated, after I got my master's. Right. So, you, you know, you get yourself the knowledge that you need. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Now, you've taught for many years mm -hmm. in the clay thing. Did you emphasize those things with your students? What was your emphasis? It depends on the course I was teaching. Mm -hmm. If I was teaching a ceramics one course, the emphasis was to put this fabulous material in front of people and allow them to discover what they could do with it. Right. So my, my course structure was all about introducing people to clay and Techniques doing that and, in a, yeah. in a positive mm -hmm. way so that they could see something of their own expression come through right. almost immediately. Right. Um, I also taught glaze chemistry. So, so they were, if they wanted to get into that, they could take a class Right, right. Now, you teach now, uh, even though you've retired f officially from teaching, you're still teaching. Uh, <laughs> so you're teaching through Craft Enrichment, mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Sally Craft Enrichment Program, and you're also teaching in your own studio. Right, right. And so what do, let's say I want to sign up for that, what, what, what am I going to learn? What I tell people when they come into my class is, I'm here to facilitate what you want to learn. Mm -hmm. Some people come in and they haven't ever touched clay before and they say, I, I just don't know anything. Tell me what I need to learn. So I'll teach them some throwing, some design basics, some hand building skills. Uh -huh. um, other people come in knowing they've already done ceramics a little bit and they come in knowing, I, you know, I'm having trouble with this aspect of throwing uh, or I want okay. to make that particular kind of item um, and, I'll, and I'll help them do that. My classes are very small so I can do all that individual attention. So now you're teaching in your studio, do they provide their own clay or pay for their own clay? I provide the clay, they pay for it at okay. cost. Okay, right. um, and then when you get to glazing, they do the same thing with that? I provide the glazes mm -hmm. and uh, they pay a small firing fee to cover, okay. the, the, cover the cost. So that way no matter firing. what they want to make, they can keep working and, and you know. They can make anything they want to make. That's really as cool. As long as it fits in the kiln. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a big kiln? <laughs> no. <laughs> About that size. Well, yeah. most things people make will fit in that, although I've seen a few pots that would not. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But that's pretty cool. So, so if someone would like to learn how to do this, because the Arts Council has a lot of workshops and classes, and we do teach a lot of things. We don't teach clay because we don't have the facility to do that. And so we sort of, you know, point you over to somebody like Dottie. And so if they wanted to do that, how would they find you? They could find me online at uh, highmeadowspottery.com or call me at 336-877-1634. Okay, and you're going to have a booth at the Blue Ridge Art Space, mm -hmm. and you have lots and lots. Now, are they all going to look something like this, or do you have a yeah, lot of different they, styles? They, no, no, okay. they, will, they will all be within this range. Yeah, and so if, they, if, they, if these tickle your fancy, then you've got a place you can go to see it. You can come to the Blue Ridge Art Space, get to know Dottie, look at her pottery, buy some pottery, and then if you really want to get into it and learn it, then you can talk to Dottie about some classes or give her a call. So uh, that's really cool. And also, if you are a potter and you hadn't heard about the potters of the Blue Ridge, uh, this is your invitation. Uh, they, I know that I'm not a potters of the Blue Ridge, but I know but Dottie isn't. I know you guys are looking to you know, involve other potters in it as well. What's the point mm -hmm. of being in a group like that? Uh, the point of being in a group like Potters of the Blue Ridge is that you can do so much more together than mm -hmm. you can individually. Mm -hmm. uh, just having a show. Yeah. If you're going to put on a, a show of your work all by yourself, you do all of it all by yourself. Right. You make the pieces, you advertise, you, you put the show up, you take the show down. Um, working in numbers is, is much Many better. Many hands make light work. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. And not to mention the strength and numbers of, of the, you know, each one of you is telling other people about it. So you're bringing in more and more people mm -hmm. to whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. So they've decided it is one of their projects to work with us, and I hope they keep doing it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Now, also, I'd like to mention that the Potters of the Blue Ridge meets at the Blue Ridge Art Space. Uh, we also have the Yarn Circle that meets on Wednesdays. We have the, uh, the uh, Blue Ridge Fiber Guild meets there. We've also got High Country Writers. Various arts groups are finding that the Blue Ridge Art Space is a fantastic place to have their meetings. And that's part of our mission, is to be a place for the artists to get and to, to collaborate and to learn from each other and you know build relationships and and work together in various ways it's so. been great for us it's it's centrally located mm -hmm. so that none of us have to travel hours to get to right to some distant 
place. meeting place. Right, right. <laughs> and so if you're a uh, part of an arts organization, we're inviting you to uh, check out with us and see if there's a possibility of you meeting at our space. We've also had theater groups that have done auditions there. So, you know, it's a big variety of things that can happen in that space. It's a pretty flexible space, mm -hmm. and we, we really enjoy having our artist friends with us. So it's been great. It makes it so much fun, you know. So uh, we are hoping you're getting involved. And do you know where the Blue Ridge Art Space is? If you don't, well, it's really kind of simple. You're at the corner of Chatelaine and State Farm Road. Now, if you're not familiar with that intersection, you turn at Five Guys, go Chatelaine beyond uh, Bryan Estates, beyond the old Chatelaine plant, and then right before you get to the red light at State Farm Road, there we are on your left, and you know you got the right building because there's little blue people on the front porch. So uh, check us out. Come and get involved. We we're open Tuesday through Saturday. We've got all kinds of really cool stuff. We've got a gift shop. You're going to have to get in the gift shop. Um, we've got artists that have their work available through the gift shop, uh, about 70 local artists that have the work in there. We have regular gallery exhibits and we have lots of workshops and classes and things you can get involved in. It's a community arts center and it's a place where the community needs to come. So make sure you come by and check us out. Uh, check our website also, watauga-arts.org, for information about all of this and much more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.